saying I I don't wanna come down from your love We'll get lost together Let me fight Hey guys, it's Bree here. Welcome back to my channel. On October 25th, NCT 127 dropped their highly anticipated title track, Favorite Vampire, from their repackaged album, also titled Favorite. In this video, I'll review the track and give you my honest opinion on the release, from the pre-release rollout to the song itself, and lastly, to the music video. This is the first music review video I've done on this channel, so if you enjoy it, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment. Now, let's get into it. First, let's talk about Favorite's pre-release rollout. In addition to releasing stunning concept photos for each version of the Favorite album and two mood samplers, NCT127 released the story of Favorite on their official Instagram page, a series of poems, photos, and coinciding short films for each member, forging a tragically beautiful interconnected drama, with quotes like, you who became the most special moment in my long life at the moment i knew that i eventually will come to love you whom i'm not supposed to love in order not to be left in someone's memory sometimes my appearance changes and now that we've come this far i don't know how i'm supposed to tell you the truth about myself the neo seemed to be hinting to the fact that in this comeback they are playing the part of something supernatural my theory that this would indeed be a vampire concept was solidified by one of the story of favorite photos, in which NCT leader Taeyong is holding a yellow rose and two movie tickets to Interview with the Vampire, a cult classic American gothic horror film based on the novel by Anne Rice. As someone who both loves dark fantasy K-pop concept and is a huge fan of the novel, I was thrilled to see exactly how NCT would execute this concept in the release. The story of Favorite was compelling, artistic, and angsty, and I was specifically struck by Do Young, Hye Chan, and Jung Woo's acting skills. Jung Woo's broken <laughs> will forever live in my mind rent free. Now let's move on to the song itself. The morning that Favorite dropped, I logged on to Twitter and much to my surprise, I saw that Rodney Jerkins, aka Dark Child, was one of the producers who worked on the track. For those of you who don't know, Dark Child is an iconic African American producer who has created hits for the likes of Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Brandy, Destiny's Child, and Beyonce, just to name a few. When I was growing up, if you heard the infamous Dark Child producer tag in the beginning of a song, you just knew it was going to be good. I'll quickly list some of Dark Child's hits here. Along with Dark Child, Kenzie, one of SM's renowned songwriters who's worked on hits like Tame Sexuality and NCT 127's Limitless, and Rodney Chick Bell, the songwriter top liner behind EXO's Monster, also worked on Favorite. As you can see, this is definitely a production team to be reckoned with, and in my opinion, they did not disappoint. Upon first listen, my initial thought was, this song sounds so nostalgic in a good way. Besides Taeyong's heavy hitting fiery entrance accompanied by Mark's uh, The first thing that struck me and completely took me aback was the chorus, because it was just that beautiful. The heavily layered vocals and harmonies were absolutely stunning, and NCT 127 really got to showcase their pipes, 
With its impactful layered vocals, it feels very similar to the chorus of Limitless, and it also immediately reminded me of something that would fit nicely into EXO's discography. The chorus is very reminiscent, in that it reminds me of the typical pining, powerful vocal heavy choruses that we often associate with second gen K-pop. It also feels like a nod to early 2000s R&B and hip hop in the same breath. Favorite's chorus is coupled with verses that are more hip hop than R&B, focusing on a tip for tap between the rap line, Taeyong and Mark, and the vocal line, until the vocal line takes over once again before the melody bleeds into the chorus. Although the chorus and verses are quite different, it still works somehow. The eerie whistling during the verses immediately reminded me of the song Look At Me Now by Chris Brown and Busta Rhymes. Yellow bottle sipping, yellow Lamborghini, yellow top missing. And I loved how the eerie whistling shifts into a very melodic whistling when the chorus begins. I felt that the whistling totally fit the haunting and tragic ambience of the song, and at the same time, it felt very similar to Sticker in that way. The snare drums, which are very present towards the end of the chorus, and even heavier during the final chorus, immediately reminded me of the drums in Destiny's Child Lose My Breath. And it all made sense and came together when I realized Dark Child worked on that song as well. Once again, the snare drums are a reference that was used frequently in early 2000s R&B and hip hop and coupled with the synths through the verse, the song felt nostalgic yet new and fresh all at once. The lyrics fit well with the tragic, almost frantic sounding melody with lines like, you come to me like a fever and destroy me and I love you and love you, I want to hurt even more desperately in this destiny and Girl, you're my favorite. I burst into tears and fall apart when I kiss you in this heat. Telling the story of a dark creature who is madly in love. The lyrics brought me back to EXO's Wolf, but favorite is definitely Wolf's more romantic and less violent sibling. The bridge is once again another throwback to 2000s R&B. Led by Do Young and continued by Hechan, the bridge melts into a monologue by Johnny coupled with Do Young's ad-libs. If you listen to old school R&B, you know that sometimes cheesy monologues commonly occurred in songs, but although it's a bit dated, I felt that it somehow worked in this song. The final chorus, championed by Tail, belting over the layered vocals and the now stronger and almost majestic final sounding drumline and repetitive signature SM beat drop that almost seems to mimic a beating heart. Taeyo, Jaehyun, Hechan, and Do Young's ad-libs are like the icing on the cake, the gift that keeps on giving, and in my opinion, the perfect ending to this song. Lastly, I want to talk about the music video. To be honest, this is going on my list of my favorite NCT 127 music videos. The beginning sequence with all of the Neos lying down, presumably in an eternal vampire empiric slumber, with Taeyong rising up in his sleep like a marionette to swallow a white butterfly was enchanting. After he swallows the butterfly, it seems that we're teleported into a dream sequence where the events of the music video take place. I wonder what the white butterfly symbolizes as it's a recurring theme in the video. But in NCT 127's reaction to the music video, Do Young commented that the butterfly is a medium that connects their dreams, bringing them together in this dreamscape. If you have any theories though, please comment below. There are a few scenes that I found exceptionally striking, such as Taeyong sitting up in his sleep almost as if controlled by an unseen force in the beginning of the music video to swallow the butterfly and lying back down at the end of the music video to bring the scene full circle. Circle, the cliff scene with Do Young and Jung Woo, Hechan disintegrating into bright red rose petals, Johnny literally sparkling, a Twilight reference maybe? Yuta submerging himself in a tub that seems to be filled to the brim with blood, and Do Young's bridge scene. As expected from NCT 127, the choreo was intense and exceptional, but it was even more poignant during the chorus. During the Saranghae Do Saranghae part of the lyrics, the Neos seem to be stretching their arms out towards something or someone, and then clutching their heads as if they're going insane, like they're pining for someone they can't or shouldn't have. And of course, in the first two choruses, placing Taeyong and Marcus centers makes the dancing even more impactful. I'm really looking forward to seeing the full choreo during the live performances and dance practice videos. I also want to talk about the styling because I thought it was exquisite. First of all, the makeup artists all deserve a raise. They managed to make the Neos look otherworldly without it being too over the top. 
Taehyung's gem encrusted makeup look and Do Young's glittery eye look are definitely my favorites, along with Hyechan's smoky eye. But can I just say, I think this is Doe's era. Does he look like a vampire prince or what? The black slacks and golden embroidered jacket ensembles look both royal and aged, almost alluding to the fact that in this music video, the Neos are immortal vampires who have been around for quite a while. And the Neos also wear earth toned outfits with an array of interesting and eclectic patterns that almost seem strange. Once again, hinting to the fact that they are supernatural and maybe of another world. I loved it. Taehyung's mullet was definitely unexpected for me. I wasn't a fan of his mullet during the regular era, but this one I kind of liked. What are your thoughts? I've seen many end citizens comment on the fact that although the favorite music video was stunning, it was lacking a bit when it comes to storytelling. Although the slumbering scenes in the beginning and end do bring the music video full circle, alluding to the fact that the entire music video takes place in a dreamscape, I do partially agree. For me, the dance break was a little out of place and I would have preferred a storyline scene there, perhaps somehow linking the music video to the clips we saw in the story of Favorite. In short, just in time for Halloween, Favorite is a well done, haunting, passionate, vampy title track which seems to pay homage to EXO's Wolf in a fresh, innovative way. The undeniably stunning layered vocals and harmonies make the song infectious and the 2000s R&B and second gen K-pop influences create a feeling of nostalgia and timelessness all at once. I think Sananghae do Sananghae I love you and I love you, the chorus's mantra, will be immortalized in K-pop, and I wouldn't be surprised if this song will be a go-to choice for covers for other K-pop artists in the future. If you like dark fantasy K-pop concepts, old school R&B hip-hop, and second gen K-pop, this song is like a dream come true. I also think it's a happy medium for all of the fans who found Sticker too experimental and noisy, although that has been NCT's things since their inception. My only complaints about this song are the facts that I wish Johnny got more lines besides his monologue and rap talking, I think he's capable of so much more. In addition, although I loved the music video and found it absolutely ethereal to watch and easy to follow, I wish we could have gotten a little more storyline, maybe fleshing out the details to connect the music video with the story of Favorite. Why are the Neos sleeping? Will they ever wake up? Who turns them into vampires? I have questions. In conclusion, for a rating, I would give this song 5 out of 5 neobongs and the music video 4.5 out of 5 neobongs. I got into NCT in 2019, but this comeback truly solidified NCT 127 as my alt group. I'm proud of them and I don't think I'm leaving End City anytime soon. So what did you think about Favorite Vampire? Did you like the release? Do you prefer it over Sticker? What do you think about the rollout and the music video? What were your favorite parts of the song, of the music video, and who's your NCT bias if you have one? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please comment below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more music reviews like this on my channel, please give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!